I don't think many people, nice ordinary people, that aren't actually involved in a direct way with the record industry, realize how appalling it is. Uh, quickly, what happens with this? A young artist, a young musician, must play music in the same way that a mother must give birth. It is an utterly irresistible impulse so deep within your nature unless you do that you are not properly alive so young artists go along to a record company and they present their music whether it's a group or an individual in live performance tapes whatever and the record company if it decides that this is uh, an artist to be signed begins a process Now, if the young artist is signed, and I sometimes see headlines in papers, particularly local papers, local groups signed to major label, my heart sinks. <laughs> when, uh, when a group signs a record deal and makes the record, the record is made on an advance which is forwarded by the record company to the artist to make the record. So... This money is recouped from the royalties, so the artist pays to record the record and also makes the record, which is then owned by the record company. Now, those among you might say, but if the artist is paid to make the record and done the work, doesn't it belong to the artist? And the answer is no. And you say, why not? And the answer is it's company policy to own the copyrights of the records. Now, I'll give you one example. Uh, two or three years ago, David Geffen sold Geffen Records to, I believe, MCA for some $450 million. Now, you might say, hey, that's a good deal. How many records did David Geffen make? Well, actually, David didn't make any. So you could say, well, how much were the $450 million from the records made and paid by Geffen artists did the artists get? And the answer is nothing whatsoever. And you might say, isn't this inequitable? And the answer is yes. It is a major disgrace which is currently beginning to be debated within the industry. And there are two young groups, very successful that you'd know, who are approaching it. But both are bound by gagging orders. In other words, they can't publicly discuss it. In case someone else catches on to the idea that theft really is not part of equity. But I'll proceed. So the young group, the young artist, has made the record and paid for it, generally anywhere between two hundred and fifty and maybe $450,000 for a major mainstream release. For that, they have to sell an awful lot of records to pay it back. Now, they say, all right, what's our royalty rate? They might have a very good royalty rate for beginning artists, like maybe even 12 or 14%, where if they can cut a really good deal, maybe 16 or 18, maybe. But then they're only paid in 90% of that. And you say, well, why am I paid on 90% of this? And the answer is because when records were first shipped out, 78s made of shellac or hard plastics, between 10 and 15 percent cracked or were damaged in transit. So the artists were automatically paid on 85 to 90 percent of the records. But you say CDs don't ship and chip on shipping, and the record company says, oh, it's our company policy. <laughs> and the young artist says, well, all right then, because the music is burning to get out. And then the record company says, well, you're actually paid on 70% of 90% of your royalties, which you'll only get after you've paid off the, between the 250 and 450,000, if you don't make a video for the same amount, that is. And you say, well, why am I only getting paid on 70% of my 90% of my dwindling royalties? And the answer is, well, CDs are new technology, and we only pay 70% uh, on new technology. They're untried formats. <laughs> and you say, well... Haven't CDs been around between since about 83 and 84? This is not new technology. And the company says, this is company policy. Now, this is only a quick overview. It is a lot more sordid than this. You want promotion on MTV? Well, 
I can tell you stories, but hey, it's a good evening. <laughs> I won't. So, Discipline, as a company, administers the copyright on behalf of its artists, but the copyright is owned by the artists. And if any of the artists ever wish to leave, then they can and take their records with them, subject only to any licensing deals we might have entered into on their behalf. So, I would myself be unable to sign a normative, basic, ongoing company policy record deal with any of the majors and most of the minors. So, were it not for discipline, I would not be able to be a working musician.